Venus Williams has sparked outrage among tennis fans after accepting a wild card to compete in the Canadian Open ahead of the U.S. Open next month. The 42-year-old hasn't played singles in nearly a year, but she made a surprise appearance in the mixed doubles with Jamie Murray at Wimbledon this month. What does Venus Williams have in store for us? Stay tuned to learn more about the tennis world and the Venus Williams frenzy. First, let's take a look at the story behind Venus's return. Venus has been linked to retirement, but the Canadian Open revealed on Wednesday Wednesday, that the seven-time Grand Slam champion would return to the singles competition in Toronto. The American will compete in Toronto for the first time since 2019 and make her WTA Tour singles debut in August of last year. Venus hasn't played a singles match since losing in the first round of the Chicago Women's Open against Shea Su Wei nearly a year ago. Earlier this month, she competed in the mixed doubles event at Wimbledon alongside Murray after recovering from a leg injury. Together, they advanced to the second round. Following the announcement made by event organizers the previous week that Venus's sister Serena will also compete in the WTA 1000 event in Toronto, it has now been revealed that Venus will make her comeback to the singles competition in Canada. We are moving on to more info on Venus's return. Serena Williams returned to singles play at Wimbledon after a 12-month sabbatical due to an injury incurred at the All England Club in 2021. After losing in the first round to Harmony Tan, she stated that she was unsure about her plans. She has since confirmed her participation in the Canadian Open and the Western and Southern Open in Cincinnati, two hard-court events that serve as essential warm-ups. For the U.S. Open, Serena will compete in both events for the first time since 2015, indicating that she will compete in the U.S. Open at the end of August. Fans were delighted to learn that Venus and Serena will compete in Canada and possibly the U.S. Open. Next up, what is the future of Serena and Venus's retirement? During an interview at Wimbledon, Serena discussed her desire to compete in the U.S. Open. She stated, when you're at home, especially in New York, and the U.S. Open, that being the first place I've won a Grand Slam, is always really meaningful. There is a great deal of motivation to improve oneself and to compete at one's location. Because Venus, now 42 years old, stated on Instagram earlier in 2021 that she did not intend to compete at the All England Club, it was not anticipated that she would participate in this year's Wimbledon tournament. But when she was spotted at the Grass Court Grand Slam, she sent the tennis world into a frenzy. She then announced that she had accepted a last-minute wild card to compete in the mixed doubles event, which further fueled the fever. Some people believe that Serena and Venus could both end their careers during the U.S. Open, which is their home Grand Slam. This theory is based on the fact that both players are intensifying their preparations for the tournament. Following on, what is the status of Serena's Grand Slam title? Serena is one Grand Slam away from equaling Margaret Court's all-time women's record of 24. However, she hasn't won a major since claiming her 23rd at the Australian Open in 2017 while pregnant with her daughter, Alexis Olympia, beating Venus in the final. Since then, she's played in four Grand Slam finals but finished runner-up in all of them. Next up is the Atlanta Collision Course, Kyrgios and Kokonakis. After winning the Australian Open doubles championship with his countryman, Tanasi Kokonakis, in January, Kyrgios experienced his first taste of Grand Slam glory. After being assigned to the same half of the draw for the ATP 250 competition, the two players will have a chance to compete against one another on the same surface during the Atlanta Open hardcourt tournament. Later this week, Kyrgios will play his first match of the season against the qualifier, and Kokonakis will play against the American, Andres Martin. Suppose both Australians are victorious in both games. In that case, they will meet each other in the round of 16, and there is also the possibility that they may meet Alex Deminor, another Australian, and a quarterfinal. Riley Opelka, the top seed in the United States, will advance to the second round against either Ilya Ivashka or Kanta Alice. Also competing in Riley Opelka's division are Tommy Paul, the fifth seed, and wildcard Jack Sock. John Isner, the defending champion, and the number two seed will play either Ben Shelton or a qualifier in his first match. Fellow Americans Francis Tiafo, the number four seed, Jensen Brooksby, the number six seed, and Brendan Nakashima, the number eight seed, are also in the same half of the draw. What is Nick Kyrgios' future regarding his loss to Novak Djokovic? After losing to Novak Djokovic in the final of Wimbledon earlier this month, Nick Kyrgios has come up with a startling statement concerning the remainder of his professional tennis career. Kyrgios gave 21-time Grand Slam champion Novak Djokovic everything he could handle in their match at the All England Club, which was Kyrgios' first Grand Slam final appearance. Despite this, the Australian fell short and lost to the Serbian in a nail-biting match that went the distance. In his comments in advance of this week's Atlanta Open, Nick Kyrgios hinted that the loss may have been a blessing in disguise because it may have extended the career 
player. For the 27-year-old player, the world's number 45 player, acknowledged that if he had defeated Novak Djokovic and won his first Grand Slam title at Wimbledon, he might not have had the will to continue playing at the highest level. I believe that every tennis player who picks up a racket has the goal of winning Wimbledon at some point in their career. Kyrgios stated that he believes Wimbledon to be the most prestigious title ever. I even had a conversation with my team about how, if I won Wimbledon, I thought it would be challenging for me to find motivation after that. As a tennis player, I honestly do not know what else I could accomplish to prove my worth. Moving on, more information regarding Nick Kyrgios' defeat. Kyrgios claims that his journey to the final of Wimbledon has taught him an important lesson about the remarkable mental strength required to win a Grand Slam title. Kyrgios reached the final of Wimbledon for the first time in his career. He continued saying, a Grand Slam can be lost in a day, but it can't be won in a day. It takes so many days. You know, you play a match, and then you have a day off. Then you play again, and then you have a day off. And it's the mental ability to keep doing the same things over and over again for two weeks at the highest level that is required. There is such a wide variety of intangible things. You may become sick one day, just like I did right before my match against Philip Krajinovic. Your mind is suffering from the pain in your body. After Rafa left, I was awake for two days straight and unable to sleep. The Australian claims that the experience has given him a greater appreciation for the mental strength required of his biggest adversaries on the ATP Tour. To win a Grand Slam, all you need is a mind like an animal and a lot of determination. I feel like I have a little bit more respect for Novak, Roger, and Rafael now than I had before. Finally, Novak Djokovic debuts courts at controversial Bosnian pyramids. On Wednesday, newly crowned Wimbledon champion Novak Djokovic unveiled tennis courts at a pyramid park in Bosnia. Djokovic frequently visits the park to refuel his energy reserves before tournaments. The tennis star is well known for his new age spiritual interests, and he has a soft spot for the hill town known as Visoko. In Visoko, thousands of people visit what they believe to be an ancient artificial pyramid complex with curative powers every year, although scientists have refuted this assertion. The 35-year-old Serb who just won his 21st Grand Slam championship on Sunday went to the location for the first time in 2020 and referred to it as heaven on earth after his experience there at least four times. Either by himself or with his family, he has gone back to the complex known as the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, where the odd site's founder, Samir Osminajic, has given him a warm welcome. Osminajic, a Bosnian businessman and self-styled archaeologist, claims that the concept of constructing a regional training center with two courts came to him during Djokovic's most recent visit, which took place in March. Djokovic declared upon his arrival at the new courts that this is a special day for Visoko, for Bosnia, for the entire region, for tennis and sport. The message of this day is peace, sport, future, and health, he said, as several hundred supporters seated near a deep forest gave him a warm greeting with loud applause. The message of this day is, he added, well, that's the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed and liked it. Make sure you subscribe on your way out.